Hey guys, today we are going to look at writing equations in slope intercept form that represent real world situations. So again, we're just writing equations in y equals mx plus b. And to do that, we need two things. We need the slope for m and we need the y intercept for b. So you know that slope can be found using the slope formula and rise over run. We're also going to see word problems today. So in word problems, slope is the number that repeats or is multiplied. Look for words like each, every, and per. Those are going to represent the slope because those happen more than once. Okay, then we will also need to identify the y-intercept. The y-intercept, you know, is where the x value is zero or where the graph line crosses the y-axis. Okay, in a word problem, the y-intercept is often the beginning point or it's some sort of fee that is added on. It's kind of extra. This number is only going to happen one time. So after you have the slope and the y-intercept, you can write your equation in slope-intercept form. So let's practice identifying slope and y-intercept from an equation. Remember, slope repeats and the y-intercept is usually something that just happens one time. So this first one says that there is already three inches of snow on the ground and it is snowing at a rate of 1.5 inch per hour. There's two words right there that tell us that 1.5 inch is the slope. Rate is another word for slope and there's that keyword per. So 1.5 is definitely gonna be the slope. And then it says there is already three inches of snow on the ground. That means we are starting at a positive three. So our equation in slope intercept form is y equals 1.5 x plus three. And that shows that we started with three inches of snow and we are adding an additional 1.5 inch of snow per hour. Okay, let's look at the next one. It says a scuba diver is 60 feet below the water and is ascending towards the surface at a rate of 3.5 feet per minute. So let's start with the y-intercept this time. They tell us that they are 60 feet below the water. So a sign to represent being below something is the negative sign. So this time our y-intercept, our beginning point, what we're starting at is negative 60. We're 60 feet below the water. And then the slope is a rate, usually has that keyword per. So I know it's gonna be 3.5, let's decide if it's positive or negative. It says that we are ascending, which means we're going up. So that's gonna be a positive 3.5. So then our equation in slope intercept form is y equals 3.5x minus 60. Okay, let's look at number three. Stanley has a $30 gift card to a pretzel shop. He buys pretzels with his gift card and each pretzel costs $2.50. So let's start with the y-intercept with the beginning point. He starts out with $30. He has a $30 gift card. He doesn't owe that to anyone that was given to him. So that's a positive 30. Okay, then the slope. There's a keyword that means slope each. I know that's going to happen more than once. It's going to repeat. Each pretzel costs $2.50. That $2.50 is going to be taken away from his $30 gift card. So we're going to make that negative to represent that. So the slope is negative $2.50. So then that makes our equation y equals negative $2.50x plus 30. Okay, let's look at the last one. It says the graph below shows the ratio of sugar to lemons in order to make lemonade. So before I do anything with this graph, I want to label these um, axis points that are unmarked because sometimes that can throw us off in our slope and y-intercept. So I go from zero to two here, so that means this must be one. So that means that each line is just counting by one on the x-axis. And it's the same thing on the y-axis. Each unit just represents one. 
which is good. That will make it easy to count the rise and the run for the slope, which is the first thing we're gonna do. So let's find our two perfect points and draw our slope triangle. The rise is two, the run is one, two, three, four. So the slope is two over four, which simplifies to one half. So that means for every one cup of sugar, you need two lemons. Okay, and then the y-intercept is just through the origin, so our y-intercept is zero. So our equation is just y equals one half x. Let's look at our last one, number five. It says Ryan is playing mini golf with his friends. The table shows the cost for everyone to play mini golf based on the number of people that play. So I need to find the slope first. Let's use the slope formula for that. So it doesn't say x and y, but the number of people is independent or our input, that's going to be x. And then the total cost is the output, that'll be our y. So this is my x1, x2, y1, and y2. So now I'm going to plug into my slope formula and it'll be 9.75 minus 6.25 over x2 minus x1, which is one minus zero. Okay, 9.75 minus 6.25 is 3.5 over one minus zero is one. So that means my slope is 3.5. And then the y-intercept is where the x value is zero, which is in this table, and that is 6.25. So our equation is y equals 3.5x plus 6.25, which means there's a fee of $6.25 to play, and then it costs $3.50 per person to play.